Hello and welcome to this Maundy Thursday devotional. Today is traditionally a day devoted to uh, talking about the institution of the Lord's Supper um, and how Jesus uh, put forth that his body was going to be broken, his blood would be shed on the cross for the remission of sins. Um, And while uh, very, very important, and not wanting to, to completely break away with you know church tradition of talking about these things. Um, there's been something else that's been impressed upon my heart um, the last few weeks, um, given everything that's going on. And I've had opportunity to uh, speak with several people. Uh, thank God for technology. Um, thank God that we can meet even in this way, that we can do these short devotionals. Um, and then we have an opportunity to communicate and be together uh, even you know, while apart. Um, but one thing that, that has come up a lot, um, or not a lot, just is, you know, several times over the, like, over the past few weeks, um, I've had the opportunity to, to discuss Jesus' humanity. Um, I think it's often overlooked. And I think in times like these, when, when times really get tough, I th- it seems to me, that a lot of people want to depend on platitudes to sort of get them through or or, or cliches to get them through. And and I don't want this to be a uh, diatribe against, you know, platitudes or anything like that. However, when times get tough, platitudes don't cut it. They don't. Um, Coffee cup versus uh, don't cut it especially when they're taken out of context. Um, But let's not be people that depend on that. Let's not be people that that put ourselves in situations to where we don't know the word enough to be, to not offer, you know, true meaningful discussion and true meaningful encouragement uh, to a brother and sister in need or somebody that is needing to hear the gospel very desperately. Um, Rather than giving them a platitude, let's give them the gospel. Let's give them the good news. People need to hear good news. And, and that leads me back to Jesus' humanity. I believe it's something that, that is often overlooked um, in Christendom. Um, you know, we, or I like to say that, that when it comes to Jesus' deity and humanity, he was truly God. It means he was God. He was the Word of God, made man of flesh, second person of the Trinity, the only begotten Son of God. But he was also truly human. As we've gone through the book of Matthew um, at the connection, uh, we've seen that that Jesus was tempted um, and that he was weakened because he was hungry. He was thirsty. Uh, He went went and fasted, went to the desert and was tempted by the devil and had plenty of opportunity to give in to temptation. But we see that his humanity was intact. And while we don't want to lean heavy on one or the other, it's important that we not forget Jesus' humanity. We don't have a God that is completely standoffish. We don't have a God that doesn't know what we go through. So his humanity is important. Is important. Especially as we discuss, or leading up to, especially on this Maundy Thursday, him going to the cross. Um, one passage that, uh, that I want to look at today uh, comes out of Luke 22, and it's after the institution of the Lord's Supper, Jesus goes with a few of his disciples, and he goes to pray. Um, there's a re- record of this in, in Matthew as well. Um, I want to read uh, want to read out of Luke, because uh, I think it, it really touches on Jesus' humanity as he is preparing to go to the cross. So Luke 22, um, and the... The passage is found in verses 39 through 46. But Jesus prays at the Mount of Olives. Um, Matthew has it listed as Jesus prays at Gethsemane. Gethsemane was a, a garden at the base of the Mount of Olives. So there's some people may think, well, those are two different places. No, it's two different accounts of the same place. Um, but in, starting in verse 39, it says... And he came out and went, and has was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray 
that you not may enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. So we'll just stop there, verse 44. It's important that that we see Jesus' humanity. Because if a God that would come down and take on just a mere shape of a human form, um, if he would to go to the cross and laugh, you know, not be tem- not really be tempted, not have, you know, just in complete deity, um, not face any sort of trials, um, that would be a God that, that I, I wouldn't be able to relate to. And, and you can make the argument that, well, he's God, you don't have to, but like, it points to the goodness of our God. It points to the goodness of Jesus that he truly took on humanity and that while here he was and did deal with things that, that we would deal with. I mean, as we're talking here, this, this cup that that Jesus is talking about is the wrath of God. We need to understand that, that, as Jesus is preparing, he knows that the wrath of God will be poured out him on him. The Son of God will have the wrath of God the Father poured out on him at the cross. Scripture tells us that Jesus became sin. He became sin. The one who knew no sin became sin. And you can and there's a great record of it in, in a book called Doctrine by uh, Mark Driscoll and Gary Brashears that talks about the agony and the physical torment and torture that Jesus went through. It's a very sobering uh, view, understanding what the Romans would have done and, and being the masters of execution that they were, they would have taken great pride in dealing with this you know, pseudo-revolutionary in their mind, this guy that caused um, an uprising in their kingdom and disturbed their peace. So they would have taken great pleasure in tormenting and hurting him. But while that is, is awful, and most people that went through the, the scourging that Jesus would have gone through would never have even made it to the cross. They would have died before. He made it to the cross. He fulfilled the promise. He had the wrath of God poured out on him. But he knew going into it, being deity, he knew what his humanity would face and what he was going to go through and that the Father would have to look away from him as he became sin, as he became that propitiation, that person that stands in the place, that sacrificial lamb that took the place for his people. The father had to look away. And I think that, and this is just my opinion, but no amount of physical torture could have been as agonizing as the father having to look away from the son. And again, we see this this nature of Jesus, this deity and humanity. Deity knowing and humanity suffering. So it's important that we don't lose the humanity of Jesus during this time. It's important that, that we understand that Jesus is a God that is not standoffish. He's not... He is not merely something we look to and, and worship. He, he is, we should worship with reverence and love and adoration, but because he took on sinful human nature, he became sin that knew no sin. He became that for us, for his people. If you call yourself a Christian, he became that for you. If you're in Christ, greater love has none than this that a man would lay down his life for his friends imagine doing that for an entire or generations and unknown numbered amount of people that being in a perfect um, union 
seated at the right hand of God, coming down, being born of, of a woman, na- you know, natural birth. Well, we, again, we're going back to humanity. We need not lose that, that Jesus was born of a woman. She birthed him. He was a child. He had to have nourishment from his mother. He had to be disciplined by his parents. And we see that throughout different accounts that, that he grew in wisdom and, and stature and reputation amongst uh, um, the people around him and the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, that, that was Jesus. He wasn't just plopped down on the earth at age 30 and started his ministry and stayed in deity the entire time and never suffered the effect of humanity. He knew hunger. He knew thirst. He knew sorrow. He knew sadness. He knew joy. He knew all of these things and was tempted just as we are. And that's what makes this Jesus, this God that comes down so special uh, amongst different pagan gods and traditions and other worldly religions. That's what sets Jesus apart because Jesus came down and took on that place. Why would he? I don't know. We see here that uh, that he is encouraged just by the will of the Father. When I say I don't know, I, I we see in Scripture why. I don't know why he would want to. It's important that we don't lose Jesus' humanity during this time. Because on this Maundy Thursday, the day before, you know, traditionally we're, we're talking about Jesus going to the cross. You know, we find ourselves in a time where we are struggling and we are completely um, in humanity. You know, obviously we, we don't claim any sort of deity. We can't. So we're looking around for answers. But thankfully we have something to look to in Jesus Christ that can help us through this time. Because he did suffer, because he does know, we can go and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on. And if it be your will, take this away. All this stuff that we're going through, everything that we go that's going on around us, everything that's keeping us apart, keeping us from work, all the people we see, the people we may have known that have passed away because of this, or whatever, we, we don't we don't know, but we know that we can go to our Heavenly Father and we can find grace there. Which brings me to my next uh, next section of scriptures, Hebrews four. Um, starting in verse 14, um, 14 through 16, uh, talking about Jesus as the great high priest. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confessions, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's the God you serve. Because Jesus, in his humanity, completed what he did on the cross. And because it was the perfect lamb sacrificed, blood was shed, the perfect sacrifice. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He has done the work. And we find ourselves reaping great rewards and benefits because of it. Because we have a God who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, like I said earlier. In every way that that we think we can be tempted, whatever it may be, Jesus can sympathize with it. Because in his humanity, he knew it. And so let us do that, as Jesus did. As Jesus went before the Father with prayer and supplication, and I didn't want to get hung up on it, but um, you know, Luke's account talks about the the sweating of blood. I mean, that's a real physical condition with people that are under extreme duress. Capillary um, capillary um, vessels uh, can burst, and people actually can have a mixture of sweat and blood. It's a real thing. It's happened recently. You can you can Google it. Um, but you see the agony that he went through in, in knowing what he was going to suffer. But yet he did it. Because the Father, 
Yeah, somebody had to drink that cup. Somebody had to take on the wrath of God. Somebody had to be that perfect lamb. And no amount of sacrifices of rams and bulls, no amount of good works, no amount of anything that we can do because our righteousness is as filthy rags. Nothing we could do would ever bring about any sort of sanctification or right standing with God. It had to be deity taking on the form of humanity and living the life that we could not, dying in the position and a place that we could not, and becoming the propitiation that we could not. So if you find yourself today wondering, asking, what's going on? And, and even if it has nothing to do with you know coronavirus or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. The, the application still, still is here for anything you may go through. Are you praying for the will of the Lord to be done? Because that's a tough thing to do in our humanity, in our weakness, in our flesh. I want what I want. But does what I want account for what God says I should want? You know, this is how you ought to pray. These are the things you ought to pray for. And as Jesus said, not my will. Are, are we praying for the Lord's will to be done? Because we can take, we can, we have security of knowing that he will carry out and meet his ends with whatever purposes he sees fit. Are we praying for that? Are we okay with that? Because I'm sure that, you know, in hindsight, you know, we can, we can say, why did Jesus have to come and die? Because God required it. I don't get to, I don't get to ask him and position myself above, above the father and say, why did you do this? I get to bask in the rich grace that's been extended. I get to bask in the knowledge of not having to work myself to death for the entirety of my life only to fall short. I don't have to constantly worry and wonder whether I'm in right standing with God. I'm secure in that because of Jesus Christ. You, Christian, are secure in that because of Jesus Christ. And if you're listening to this and you say, I'm not a Christian, um, Repent and believe the gospel because you have security to be found in right standing with God because of Jesus Christ. And as we're as we just discussed in, in Hebrews four, we should not be um, people that are are should shy away from approaching our God. And, and I have that tendency. You know, it's probably one of my biggest downfalls is is knowing that. Um, when I fall short, I try to work it out and, and make it right in my own power, knowing that I can't do that. And it's, it's, it's asinine because right here it says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. that We may find mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. We're in a time of need. There's a song by Matt Marr that says, Lord, I need you every hour I need you. We find and need help every hour of every day. And you have grace, you have mercy, and you have help. And you have a high priest that is interceding for you presently, right now. And you know that God does not ignore the prayers of his saints. And again, you know, we may not have a prayer answered in the way we want to, but if it's the Lord's will, then I, I got to be okay with it. I need to be okay with it. Because he's God, I'm not. So if you find yourself in a place today where you're wondering, asking, questioning, approach the throne of grace, find your help, find mercy. Because right now in our, in our humanity, we probably have a lot of questions. We've had, you know, um, it, it, just personally, it's, it's, not been, it's not been great the last couple months. Well, 2020 hasn't been awesome. Um, it's it's kind of sucked. So... Um, in my humanity, I say, you know, I want to shake my fist and ask why God. Uh, but really, I need to approach the throne and ask for help. And know that I'm going to receive mercy. Even whenever I am tempted to want to question God and shake my fist at him. So let us not be a people that try to lean on our own understanding. Let's not be a people that try to do it our own way. But let us approach our God and know that we're going to receive help 
Know that he loves you. Know that he cares for you. Enough that that deity took on the form of flesh and suffered immensely in a way that you and I can only read about in books but never truly grasp what Jesus did, what Jesus took on, and the sacrifice that he is and made for us on that Good Friday. So as we prepare for Good Friday, as we look forward to um, the rest of this week and prepare preparation for uh well we have you know a black saturday um which is a dark day but for the christian um because we have scripture uh, we we know it's not a black saturday because we know jesus rose on sunday we take great comfort in that and we should again knowing that god's purposes were were fulfilled and are and is being fulfilled continually through the work of of Jesus Christ. So let us rest easy in what he's done and that he took on humanity and, and, and lived in humanity in a way that you and I never could. So let us not lean on our own humanity, but let us look to what Jesus did and not forget that he was God. Hosanna. Emmanuel, God with us. The one who can save that's the God you serve. I hope you guys are blessed. hope you have a great Thursday. and uh, Look forward to um, seeing you tomorrow when we have our Good Friday sermon. Be sure to tune in. Thanks. Bye.